Global opinion of the United States has been on the rise since Joe Biden was elected in 2020. But new data from Pew Research Center shows that in the last year, the US's global favorability has fallen as the global public has taken an increasingly negative view towards the country, its democracy, and its international policies. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the data and explain why US favorability is falling worldwide. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So, what do the numbers say in terms of the US's popularity across the world? Well, if you take the median of the 34 geographically spread countries that were surveyed, then views of the US are more positive than negative, with 54% of people saying that they have a favorable view and 31% saying they have an unfavorable view of the US. When you break this down by region though, you do get some pretty varied results. In Europe, and indeed in Canada, the favorable versus unfavorable numbers are more evenly split. Poland, however, is a notable European outlier, with 86% of people viewing it favorably and just 10% holding an unfavorable opinion. While in the Asia-Pacific region, the US scores some of its highest favorability ratings, with the likes of South Korea, Thailand, the Philippines, and Japan all recording favorability of the US between 70 and 80%. The three countries in the region that hold negative views of the US are Singapore, Australia, and Malaysia. As for the Middle East and North Africa, the numbers vary massively depending on the country. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Israel has a strongly favorable view of the US, 77%, while Turkey and Tunisia have 80 and 87% negative reviews respectively. The US also scores well in Africa, with strong ratings in Ghana, Kenya, and Nigeria, as well as a net positive but lower favorability score in South Africa. Finally, the Latin American countries surveyed provide a range of positive results for the US too, with Colombia, Peru, and Brazil on the higher end, and Chile and Argentina on the lower end. But more importantly, how have these views changed? As a quick note, not all of the countries surveyed this year were also surveyed last year, so we can't compare them all like for like. However, in almost all countries where we can compare 2023 to 2024, positive views of the US have declined, down 12 points in Australia, down 10 in Israel, South Africa, and the Netherlands, down eight in Germany, Greece, and Sweden, down seven in Poland and Spain, down six in France, and five in the UK. There were also declines, albeit smaller, in Japan, South Korea, Nigeria, and Mexico. There were in fact just two countries that saw a marked increase in US favorability compared to last year. Hungary up from 44 to 52%, and Kenya up from 71 to 78. While Brazil and Argentinian favorability also increased, but by just one percentage point. Other data backs up this trend too. According to the 2024 Democracy Perception Index, positive attitudes towards the US have fallen across the world. So why is the world becoming less enamored with the United States? Well, there are obviously many reasons, but we're gonna go through a few that we think are particularly important. The first is perhaps the most abstract one, and that's that the data suggests that the global public's favorability of the US has dropped as their view of US democracy has fallen. In 23 out of 34 countries surveyed, a plurality of people think that democracy in the US used to be a good example, but has not been in recent years. And a handful of the remaining countries think that it has never been a good example for other countries to follow. Only in eight countries do a plurality or majority think that democracy in the US is a good example to follow right now. The global public may well be being turned off by the US's democracy as they watch it become increasingly polarized, especially as the country approaches its next presidential election and a real possibility of a return to the presidency by Donald Trump, who the data shows is globally unpopular when compared to Joe Biden, Barack Obama, and George W. Bush. Similar trends can also be found in other surveys too. The 2024 Democracy Perception Index shows that the positive perception of US influence on global democracy rose from Biden's election year, 2020, to 2023, before falling again in 2024. But it would be foolish to say that the US's favorability is declining solely because of the potential return of Donald Trump, 
as the actions of the Biden administration, particularly in the past year, have also contributed to their deteriorating reputation. Even though Biden gets better assessments than Trump does globally, ratings for the current US president are down since last year in 14 of 21 countries where trends are available, including double digits in Australia, Israel, Japan, Poland, South Africa, Spain, Sweden, and the United Kingdom. The elephant in the room of this video, however, is the war in Gaza and the American response to it. As we've covered in many other videos, the US is Israel's staunchest ally and has continued to provide Israel with significant military and diplomatic support. Even as the Palestinian death toll continued to rise, the humanitarian catastrophe worsened and the US's position increasingly became a global anomaly. Of the five global issues that Pew Research surveyed the global public about, Biden received his lowest ratings on the war in Gaza. On average, across the 34 countries surveyed, 31% said they approved of Biden's handling of the conflict, while 57% disapprove. Unsurprisingly, those most opposed to Biden's approach in Gaza are predominantly Muslim countries, Tunisia, Turkey, and Malaysia. Other surveys, like the Arab Barometer, show that the United States' standing among Arab citizens has declined dramatically. And even when we return to Pew's data, in European countries, with the exception of Poland, there's also a pretty strong disapproval of Biden's handling of the conflict. And the same can largely be said, although not perfectly, for the Asia-Pacific and Latin American regions. Only one country surveyed, Kenya, records approval of more than 50% on the issue. Interestingly, even in Israel, the public disapprove of the US's handling of the conflict, likely in opposition to Biden's increasingly sharp rhetorical criticism of Israel. Though disapproval does come from both those who think he's favoring Palestinians too much and Israelis too much. To wrap things up though, do these shifts in global opinion on the US actually matter? Well, for starters, these latest numbers are by no means permanent, as opinions shift in both directions fairly easily largely depending on who the president is. But strategically speaking, in places the US is playing or wants to play a key role, for example, in the managing of the Israel-Palestine conflict and the wider Middle East conflicts, it's important for the US to maintain at least some level of favorability among the public in those places, in order for them to be seen as a legitimate and welcome actor. The risk for the United States, and there's already data suggesting this is happening in some regions, is that receding US approval is met with growing positive attitudes towards its adversaries like Russia and China. If you want to learn more, then check out Too Long, our 60-page, high-quality magazine full of TLDR's very best journalism. This issue is focused on the UK election, diving deep into the campaign, the results, and how the winners plan to fix Britain. It's more than just Britain, though, with stories including the European parliamentary elections, the countries likely to join the EU next, the latest from Gaza, the rise of Melee, and, of course, the US election. Now, we've decided to make the magazine for two reasons. Firstly, it allows our journalists to write in more detail, diving deeper and ignoring algorithmic restrictions to produce the best work we can. And secondly, it's a good way for you to support TLDR and will help us to produce free YouTube videos as long as we can. If you're interested, then you can pick up a copy from our website, where we're selling two editions of the magazine. Firstly, there's the standard edition, and then there's the premium edition, which gets your name printed in the thank you section of the magazine, access to our behind the scenes podcast, and exclusive access to our election night live stream, where we'll be reacting to the exit poll with you as it happens. Oh, and by the way, we're going to be making an issue of Too Long every four months. So if you want to ensure that you never miss an issue, then you can subscribe, which gets you a 25% discount. If you have more questions, there's a full Q&A linked in the description, where you'll also find a link to our store. And while you're there, make sure you use the code ELECTIONWEEK to get an additional £2 off any purchase. Thanks so much for hearing me out, and if you are interested, please do pick up a copy, as it's a great way to support our journalism and help us to continue making free YouTube videos as long as we can.